Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video on what is happening across the Caribbean region. I hope that you're all having a really great day thus far. And so, uh, in this video, we'll be talking about what is currently going on as well as what's expected as we progress into the next couple of days. And so, before I go into details, please do subscribe and tap the notification bell if you haven't done so already. And to share your support for the channel, you can leave a like on this video. Okay, and so in this video, in the latter part of this video, I'm going to be explaining uh, what is the correct answer to the quiz that I posted in the community uh, section of my channel. This was it, so stick around to find out the answer and why the answer is uh, what it is. And so let's first go ahead and talk about the Caribbean. And so we're looking at the infrared satellite and we're seeing here that uh, there are some spots of showers and thunderstorms noted here and there across the region. Uh, we see a bit of activity in the vicinity of the Windward Islands. Also over into Central America, portions of Central America, we see some activity also a little bit north of the eastern section of Jamaica, but nothing too intense for the most part going on as there is still some dry air lingering and that dry air is going to increase as we progress into the next couple of days and so let's look closer at these different regions so looking at the northeastern caribbean uh, we're seeing that there isn't too much mainly some passing clouds again uh the possibility for maybe a little stray shower or so is definitely there as we take a look at the uh, southeastern Caribbean specifically the vicinity of the Windward Islands we can see here that uh, there is some activity so there is a more probability of some rainfall across these islands and then as we take a look at the vicinity of the Greater Antilles we see a bit of activity just to the north of eastern Jamaica and of course some cloudiness here and there but nothing too intense and then same story as we head over uh, into parts of Central America, the Yucatan, Belize, uh, Honduras, going over to Guatemala. There is just a bit of activity taking place with uh, nothing too intense. So across the region, there is no uh, intense deep convection that is noted at this time. And so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that water vapor map. And we can clearly see all those yellows that indicate uh, dry air. And so uh, where we see those white that is where we have more uh activity taking place and decreased dry air in the region so that's the case for parts of the southeastern caribbean but for the most part there is that dry air that is dominant and so let's now go ahead and take a look at what the models are expecting in terms of how much rainfall is expected between now and the midweek and first up of course we're taking a look at the euro and so of course this is how much rainfall is expected in total in inches and so uh there we have the different colors over to the right and the different values to show how much rainfall each is uh, indicating each of these different colors or shades is indicating and so between now and wednesday where we see those blues uh that is more rainfall expected than where we see a lot of those greens of course because as we go up from those greens to those blues shades of purple and so on uh, that is increased in rainfall expected in total and so we see that the most rainfall expected across the region will be taking place uh, in the vicinity of central america and also another in south america we a lot of other areas maybe just some brief showers here and there but nothing intense and then it's a similar story for the gfs gfs is expecting that uh that is where the most rainfall is going to be along uh portions of central america as well as south uh, northern south america of course and so that is really what is expected and then in terms of all that dry air uh we can definitely see here where uh, as we're going to be heading into thursday uh, there is going to be that pocket of dry air uh, now dominating portions of the northwestern Caribbean. A little bit of moisture seen over in parts of the northeastern basin. And so the euro is expecting somewhat of a similar story in terms of uh, all that dry air that is expected around Thursday across uh, portions of the Caribbean. And so that is really what is happening right now. So I made a video which I'm going to be attaching to this now about the answer for the quiz that I posted Saturday. And I really hope that uh, it's going to help you understand what is the epicenter, what is the focus, and overall if you got the correct answer. 
let's go ahead and visit the quiz that I posted. It reads, the point within the crust of the earth where an earthquake begins is known as the, and three options were given, namely starting point, epicenter, and focus. So option A, sadly if you chose that, it is out. Yes, we want to know where an earthquake starts inside the crust, so automatically that would be the point of origin, but it has a name. That means the answer is between options B and C. First thing, we have to keenly analyze the quiz. The keyword to pay attention to is within, and I should make mention that focus and epicenter are often confused and even used interchangeably, but they are most certainly different. Before I tell you what the answer is, let me try to make it as understandable as possible so that if you got it incorrect, you'll be sure of your answer the next time a similar quiz, question, or even a discussion comes around. So I'll be doing a sketch to aid in my explanation and let's recall that as humans, we live on the crust of the earth and the crust is made up of large slabs of rocks called plates. So no, it's not the kind of plates that you would be eating your dinner from. These plates often make contact which results in earthquakes. So on the diagram along the boundary between two plates, which is known as a fault, I'm depicting that red symbol to illustrate the starting point of an earthquake. As that point where the earthquake begins is known as the focus and a less common synonymous name, hypocenter. So by now you might know whether you selected the correct option. If your answer was focus, congratulations! However, what is the epicenter? So the word epi means over or on top, so now you might guess that the epicenter is above the focus on the surface of the earth. The earthquake felt is usually strongest at this point and weaker the further one is. So that means the family living in the grey house would feel the earthquake stronger than the family living in the blue house simply because the seismic waves lose energy as they travel further from that source of generation. So I hope that this really aided in your understanding of how earthquakes happen and also the difference between the focus aka hypocenter and the epicenter. In Jamaica this month January is earthquake awareness month and so here are a few tips to remember should in case you ever get caught in one of these events. And so that is it for now and if you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there and of course remember to always Always be otherwise and stay tuned for detailed updates on what is happening in the tropics.